uh, deals with the uh, companies that you visited on this trip. Um, break up into the, the new teams, the uh, artificial contrived teams, that, uh, uh, four teams, I guess. Um, and I'd like you to just take about uh, 10, 15 minutes to consider some of these questions. And I'd like to just open it up, let people uh, share what they think are the uh, uh, key learning. I'll probably see a lot more of this in your final projects, and uh, at least by next uh, uh, Saturday. So these are the uh, these are the things. That, and I, I have just an observation or two on this. I also, even though this is my second time here, um, uh, I almost can't process uh, everything that uh, I've seen here. Uh, but I did read. Uh, uh, I've been reading the, the uh, New York Times on the web uh, every morning, uh, five o'clock or whenever I wake up. And uh, there are a couple of observations. There's a, there's a great irony uh, to me uh, in the fact that I just saw a, uh, a news article that uh, GM, and maybe you looked at the news this morning, GM is considering a merger with uh, uh, Chrysler. Uh, GE, uh, down 18% last week, as was uh, the market. So, um, uh, you know, we're, we're considering, uh, we've just changed the law, basically, to allow the Fed to inject money into the uh, banks and take an equity stake in the banks. Uh, what's particularly ironic uh, to me is um, uh, uh, there was also an article this morning on the Times about the People's Congress is meeting here in China, and uh, they are... Uh, considering they're going to make a decision by the end of today about whether to allow farmers and peasants uh, give them uh, the use of the land rights uh, that they currently don't have. Curren currently a, a farmer, uh, the land is owned by the government, the farmer gets land rights up to 30 years, but they can't do anything with the property rights. They can't lease the land to somebody else. They can't sell land rights uh, for better use to a company or to another individual. And they're considering making that change. So we talked briefly uh, last week uh, about uh, property rights uh, in China. So at the same time that U.S. Uh, Fed is injecting money and taking equity stakes in banks, China is now sort of coming to the center uh, as well, allowing their peasants to do this. I mean, this is a uh, uh, great uh, irony to me. Um, anyhow, that's the kind of thing I'm sure you're, you're thinking about. Um, what I'd like you to do in your teams is uh, consider this. Uh, just very briefly, uh, I'm going to ask each team to tell the other teams what the, what the company that they did, they, you know, two minutes, uh, what they're about, um, and how would you rate the importance of your company being in SIP? Like, what it, is this really important to the rest, to the rest of the larger company? Uh, is this an experiment uh, and so forth? And what are those sort of key incentives that drove uh, those companies here? It's going to be different, I think, in uh, different cases and then the issues that came up. Mm -hmm. Then I would like you to think about your own individual companies. And if you had only two insights to share with senior management and your companies about what you learned this week, what would those two uh, insights be? Uh, great opportunity, serious threat, uh, but uh, wh whatever the insights are that you came away with. Um, uh, we talked a lot about culture in our last class, and uh, I'd like you to think about maybe uh, what are the, uh, you know, what, what do you think is the most problematic cultural issue uh, that you observe here or could anticipate? And were any major preconceptions that you had shattered? Was there something that you learned here that absolutely flipped your thinking 180 degrees? Uh, uh, really sort of uh, shattered some preconception. Let's skip the uh, future. In general, in general, or the company? Uh, in general, in general. Um, and then uh, similar, we'll skip China's future, uh, Wei Kong covered sustainability and so forth. Um, uh, but uh, similar to what two issues would you take to your senior management? What two things would you share with your local, uh, your state, and the federal uh, congressional rep? So there's a there's a political component to uh, your trip here as well as a business component to it. Um, so I would just uh, it's 11 o'clock now, a couple minutes after 11 o'clock. 
take only about 10 minutes. I'd rather have the conversation than too much time with your heads down. Uh, consider these questions, and then uh, we'll just have a, each team can sort of share this, and individuals can share some answers. And then uh, we'll call it a day and go to the maglev train and go uh, to the airport. Good? Not right for our company. So um, over 10 years, uh, they revised their plan many times, and they got to this point of, of just doing validation over here. Um, and their strategy over here is pretty independent from their corporate office. Um, corporate lets, lets, lets the country manager really run with the strategy, and they trust him to do what's, what's right for this facility. Um, in terms of being an SIP, we don't think it's, it's critical that this company's actually in the park. The company's probably actually too small for SIP and what they're doing over here. Um, but, you know, they probably came to SIP for, for many reasons, for, for several of the reasons that other companies do, for ease of entry, right? So everything was, it was set up, the, um, you know, the housing is there, the infrastructure is there. It was really this turnkey solution for them to enter, enter SIP. Um, and then there's, there's the talent pool as well. You know, they're competitors right down the road, so they're pulling from a lot of the local talent in SIP, so it is beneficial for, for them to be there. Um, I think some of the, we kind of skipped around, some of the, the biggest issue they have um, being over here is the turnover issue. Two years ago, they were at 50% turnover. It's down to 30%. They think next year it's going to be 20. There's just huge competition for the talent. And that's, that's probably their biggest issue. Uh, did I miss anything? Good. Great. Good okay. summary. Good. Any, uh, any other volunteers before I start pointing? Or? <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Yep. Uh, just say your name, uh, whoever's gone. AMD, and they manufacture uh, microprocessors. Um, within the uh, SIP facility, they only do the testing and packaging. So they don't actually do the manufacturing there. Um, and they do that for two product lines. Part of the reason is that the uh, testing and packaging is lower automation and process. Um, the SIP offers them special economic incentives and exports. Their customs are separate from uh, mainland uh, China. And they relocated here because most of their customers are here, uh, the end customers, for the products that end up getting shipped somewhere else. So the other unique thing is they do 100% testing on their, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not sampled. sampled. It's not sampled. Yeah, yeah the way I think it's un uncommon. And you know, with the low labor cost, I think it provides them an opportunity to do that 100% testing before it goes out the door. Anything else to add? Any any issues for the, that came up? And uh, I know that this may not they may not have been as forthcoming at this company. Uh, but uh, anything that you guys uh, look at? In terms of a challenge or an issue, or well, their AMD business as a whole right now is struggling to catch up with Intel. Uh, this facility can't really help them with it because they're too far down in the value chain. Uh, that's really got to be something that comes out of Sunny Delta. Yeah. The, the, the only thing that we are in the sphere of total uh, operational efficiency. We are not at all in the strategic field or strategic area. Those people are just there to do what they are told to do by, by the headquarter at the cheapest price possible. That's it. Yeah. Quality control That's testing true. for chips that are made in Germany Absolutely. and, and So they do not kind of master their their fate. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, over here. Uh, John DeLeon and we visited the Comscope. They basically make the coaxial cable that you find in your houses. The small, and then they also have the larger one that's used for wireless networks, but it's uh, something they do here. And uh, the main reason they moved over here was to uh, <coughs> use the China labor pool and have lower costs for making this. Uh, they actually manufacture it here in their plant. But uh, some of the main reasons that they went to SIP was that uh, they started out with flat farmland, and within eight months, they built a, a whole building put in a whole production, they were producing product in eight months. It was, it was just amazing to hear that. Um, but as we saw out on the floor, the product, once we saw what they had to do, um, we could see that uh, the, they could move this operation over here because it was a fairly simple, I guess, uh, operation. It was a bunch of machinery that wasn't super complex. They could bring it over here, put it in place, plug it in and go. Um, but then also using the local labor pool was, was big. 
Also, the tax incentive, the area they're in, um, they're not paying taxes. All of the product that they make is exported back to the U.S., which I think, to me, and I think to some of us, was, was, was a huge, we thought, you come over here, you make stuff, you're going to sell it over here. They can't sell it over here because they just cannot compete with the local uh, local people that make it. They make it for a lot cheaper. And um, one of the other things that we kind of saw was that uh, they were trying to get their suppliers to improve their quality. They're working with their suppliers to improve their quality. Um, John Dong actually kind of brought this up in the meeting that maybe that's going to be their downfall because they're working with their local suppliers to build up this quality. The other local people here making the same product are going to use those same suppliers. Their quality is going to get better. So they may be digging their own grave here. But, uh, yeah, and the price will be cheaper. Yeah, and the price will be a lot cheaper. Okay. Good. All the, the, uh, the retention rate that um, uh, these councils actually had, she was very proud of it. It was about 80%. 98%. 98%. Yeah, the retention rate. And they were very, very proud of that. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> So they were happy that they could keep people on and uh, keep improving the uh, training of people. So, well, yeah. part, part of that too is that they uh, have classes in the afternoon to teach English. They have a lot of training. So these people, they are invested in the company and they don't really. <laughs> <laughs> that was a recurring motif that a lot of these companies. Uh, they, uh, last thing? Huh? Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Christina Llewellyn, and we went to Spansion. Um, Spansion makes flash memory, um, particularly for mobile phones, um, and their niche is that they are working on some technology that consumes less energy in these devices. Um, they were, at first, a joint venture with Fujitsu, and they have a lot of Japanese culture. Um, they were purely manufacturing at first. Two years ago, they added R&D capabilities. Um, they're proud that they have the lowest turnover rate in their industry, um, but because of, uh, you know, prices dropping <coughs> constantly, um, they're getting creative on how they train um, and incent their employees. Um, they don't have a big training budget, so they're starting to use their in-house managers and whatnot to keep folks up to date. Um, and, you know, really, we met with HR officials and we talked the entire time about the people and the culture of the company. We don't have much of a clue about why they're there or what the broader um, uh, game plan is. Um, the company is headquartered in California, and we would assume that there's tax incentives and all those things that we talked about with SIP, you know, the, as for the reasons that they're there. But in terms of that, that particular unit strategy, it's just to make a product and get it out in a consistent way and lower their, you know, increase their efficiency. Is their product uh, largely for export? As well, or is yeah. it being incorporated into other companies in the area? We don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Um, uh, the next question uh, I asked was, uh, 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 what were the two most important insights you might share with your own individual companies? So, uh, anybody uh, have some takeaway? Uh, uh, anything? Uh, anything that anybody thought, geez, my company would really be interested in knowing about. This, uh, yeah. Uh, well, as, as you, uh, Denise Pando, as you know, I work for R and in the K twelve outreach program, and I'm actually work for one of the high schools. And one of the principals in high school actually wants to incorporate Mandarin in her school. Um, I think when I go back, I'm going to encourage her to go ahead and pursue that, and also um, see about getting some of the students to come to uh, China on some sort of spring you know, break or something. It's very important that they be exposed to this kind of culture. Okay. And, and just before the next person, by a show of hands, how many people's companies are in China? How many how many companies are international at all? Same companies, uh, maybe one or two more here. So um, I just wanted to finish up on that. Also, um, I uh, had a meeting with our, I'm supposed to have a meeting with the president of the college. They postponed because I was going on this trip. So I know when I get back, they're going to want to know. The and I'm going to be excited to go, and this is a great opportunity for our right to do this as well. Denise is plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Anybody else? Uh, yeah. I'm Thierry Schlagdenhofen. My, my company is producing bricks and blocks and various uh, construction material for pavement and for building houses. And the reason why they are not in China is they are based in, in Ireland. 
uh, more they're not in China because they think that uh, in the construction market uh, there only be room for the first movers as they were not in the first wave of China investors they say oh too late too bad for us I think it's a, it's a pretty big misunderstanding when you see all the buildings that are crushed down and rebuilt and, and this frenzy of, of construction here uh, there is definitely room for all kind of products I hand, low hand, everything. So that's probably something you will convey. Yeah. Anybody else? Hi. Yeah. So two things that kind of stood out to me when we were driving by all those uh, new apartment buildings that they're throwing up. So um, that's like a great market for Corning's clear curve product. It's it's a fiber optic cable that's much easier to install in buildings. So with all that construction, I mean, that's that's a great place that we can sell into. Um, then the second. Thing was around the emergence of R&D in China. We're paranoid about intellectual property protection. I have even gone on audits of plants in Taiwan. Um, but I'm getting a real impression that firms are trying to figure out how to do R&D here. And uh, I think Corning needs to do that too. David McLaughlin. Anyone else who's on? burning insight to uh, run back to their company with? No. Mark, Marty, the only thing oh. I was going to say, you know, working at Xerox, you know, the, the takeaway for me is that we've got to come away with a more flexible work process in the States. Uh, we have a very traditional uh, GM Chrysler union Model. work process, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not working well for them, and I'm not sure it's working so well for us. Yeah, the, uh, one of the things that came out pretty loud and clear is uh, this willingness of uh, Chinese companies to embrace new ways of doing things. So I think, you know, you get uh, this hardening of the arteries and uh, major uh, uh, U.S.-based multinationals, and um, that's probably a good message. Um, uh, last uh, two questions from a uh, uh, China-U.S. perspective. Um, if you got to sit down with uh, Hillary Clinton, New York State uh, Senator, at, uh, uh, this week, um, uh, is there anything that you might uh, say to her, Christina? We talked about how if this middle class does emerge and they're aspiring to have the same quality of life as U.S. Um, citizens, you know, they have, they're the number one CO2. Um, producer, but per capita, we are. And so if they're aspiring to have the same quality of life, we have to do something about these green issues, you know, these energy issues um, in terms of, uh, you know, their energy consumption is going to go through the roof and that's going to affect all of us. And uh, Greg brought up the point that they're really doing a better job here in China of securing natural resources than we are. Um, so it would be great to have a partnership rather than a brawl with the resources. Yeah, but this notion that uh because the government can mandate change as opposed to having it necessarily voted in, uh, things can happen pretty quickly as uh, uh, we've discovered here. So our democratic process may actually slow, the, uh, uh, slow our uh, uh, adaptability in that uh, regard. Uh, Sean and then uh, Bill. Did you have, Sean? Yeah, uh, the general thinking is that uh, the U.S. has to take a much more long-term uh, outlook as uh, infrastructure development. Myopic vision that we have with respect to our markets, with respect to our economy, with respect to our, our development is not going to be able to keep pace when we get a 5,000 year old society and say we look out 50 years and say this is where we want to be. It evolve in, in a plain way to that. We, we tend to be worried about the next quarterly uh, earnings announcement <laughs> and uh, not on my watch. Uh, yeah. yeah. Bill? Yeah, my, my thought was actually very similar to Sean. It's just uh, maybe a different package. It's running the whole role of government in, in enabling the success of businesses. I think that whole perspective is something that we need to look at very carefully and how governments work to help create infrastructure, create the right kind of environment for businesses to be successful. But it is a quandary because, you know, to do that, the government has to have money. And to get money, they have to tax people or tax, tax uh, you know, businesses. businesses. So it becomes a quandary of how to really get the right stimulus in place to be able to make successful environmental businesses. Yeah. Yeah. 
Danielle? Our team's conversation was a little bit different, but I think it's so really important. And he spoke a lot about the culture experience here as far as how we, um, we heard everyone saying the word we. Never a point was an I as far as whether we are in the company or whether we were listening to um, some of our keynote speakers. Everything was about we, the people. And so actually, can you share your little bit about the English about the story? Yeah. Um, you guys see the difference uh, between um, American culture and the Chinese culture from two things. First is the name. A Chinese name starts with the family name and the given name. The family name goes first. And the English name, first name goes first. The family name goes last. But what's important here is usually people put what's most important first. So you can say, in China, what's important first is the family first. The visual is next. And for example, in the university, usually when people call me, they will not call my given name. Usually they would call me, OK, for example, my last name is Li. OK, so close friends would call me Xiaomi or Dan, which means big or small me. Okay. <laughs> so that's how we do that. We don't really call the call our, uh, first name, because that's given name. So we, uh, that's the first thing about the name. The second thing is about the mailing address. Here yeah, America. The, about the what? Mailing yeah. 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 address. Yeah. Mail address. So in America, you start with your name, and then your street name, and then city, then the country. And in China, it's the other way around. You start with the country, China, and then some province, and then the city, and then the street <laughs> name. And finally, it's my name. <laughs> OK. So that basically shows uh, the difference in culture. Those are just two simple things now. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, last question. Any major, did somebody come over here with some sort of preconception <coughs> and just have it uh, shattered uh, uh, over the course of the week? Was there any, was there any sort of real uh, uh, revelation or, my God, I thought it was going to be like this and it was like this? Uh, nothing yet so mm -hmm. earth shattering? Or Danielle? The construction piece. You had mentioned to us that there's a lot of construction and in my life, a lot is quite different. <laughs> Yeah. Bill? Mm -hmm. To me, the biggest surprise was that uh, the communist government, uh, uh, I think, a little bit less uh, direct controlling than I had expected. I expected from a communist standpoint to see a lot stronger control on things. And the thing that really surprised me on that was uh, it seemed like the role of the government here was more in the line with trying to uh, provide for or bring some kind of level of satisfaction to the people rather than being focused on purely what it wanted, which was a real turnaround by Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, I, I was surprised by the, um, the presence of, of the gap that you keep talking about between, you know, the, the um, rich, and rich and, and the poor, that it was just so prominent everywhere you went. It's not to say they don't have it in other countries, but you got to—you really got to kind of look at it. But it was just everywhere you went. And, and for the um, even what they were showing in the Olympics and the new construction and everything, and to just to have that everywhere and in the lower end wherever you went, was just—I I would think they would be better. Yeah, Sean. The, the open statement that they're moving toward democracy—I've never heard that before. It's very yeah, you'd walk into the Super Grand Mall that we were at yesterday, and you're on the second floor, and it's Toys R Us, and it's Best Buy, and it's... Uh, I told my wife uh, very early this morning, I said, if you were in that mall, you wouldn't know what city you were in. You could be in uh, Manhattan, or you could be in Paris. Uh, so that sort of homogenization really uh, uh, supports this uh, opening up, I think, yeah. I had an experience exactly like that last night we were in the French concession and we had dinner at uh, Azul, the Spanish restaurant and I, we could have been in any city and literally when we walked out onto the street I saw a building across the street that had Chinese writing on it and I almost said to Kate, but I thought it and I told her, I said, 
Oh my gosh, they're building this Chinese wedding on the whole <laughs> I forgot we were in China. <laughs> we're leaving you here. You're, you're totally uh, switched around. Uh, yeah, Bill. At, at the same time, in that same mall, the other day, I wanted to take a picture, and one of the policemen stopped me. Yeah, so like a little reminder, like you're, you're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. 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 Good. Terry? I, my, my, my big surprise was that it's uh, much more individualistic society than I, than I imagined. It was pretty sharp by seeing a uh, communist country with no health care system, no pension system, uh, expensive education system, which for me, especially coming from continental Europe, yes. it's, uh, it's a nonsense. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is, uh, you know, you look at all of that and you, uh, and you have to say Shanghai is much more globalized than most of the cities that we're familiar with. I mean, they're much more open to, to this and we're, uh, uh, I think we have a lot to, lot to do in the States here, so. Marty, you want to add to that? Yeah, here, Israel. Here we're coming to a communist government. There's no national health care plan for its people. Um, I, I think that's terrible. Um, the other thing that uh, Dr. Chen expressed in, in his lecture was that um, somebody like Dr. Chen had to get receive all care. We had a number of people receiving the same care in the same room. So uh, yeah. you know, it's just evident that they, they don't even have a health care system in place that's yeah. adequate to take care of their folks. Yeah, I talked with him a little bit on the break there, and uh, he said one thing is that the doctors are really terrific, but uh, no bedside manner. Uh, that may be a real legacy of uh, communism in terms of customer service. So, um, good. Anything else uh, here, or are we done? Okay, thank you. I really, uh... well, I, I, I would like to add, Marty, I would like to uh, also thank uh, Wei Fong and her uh, uh, entire team. Uh, not all of whom are in this room right now, are they? Yeah. Um, but I really, uh, I was here last year, and I have to say two things. Um, I have to agree with uh, uh, Wei Fong that uh, this is a terrific uh, group. Um, uh, what did you say? The, the Cal <laughs> uh, you know, this is a great opportunity to sort of experience something that I think is really, uh, you don't experience too often the first time you come to a country that you've had such thoughts about. Um, and the caliber of the engagement, uh, from my perspective, was uh, extremely high. So uh, really terrific. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Um, I also have to say we changed the program uh, this year. And uh, I may have told some of you, but uh, Li Ying, uh, I was very familiar with because Li Ying spent all, we were on the trip last year with her and the Cassandra as well. And Li Ying spent about four days at the Shanghai Number One Hospital with Kathy Hagen. But I emailed her for three weeks over the, while we were nailing down these company visits. And I'm thinking, who's Li Ying? Who is Li Ying? She was by the wind last year to me. So um, I really didn't even know I was talking to somebody that I knew. Um, she really did a, a terrific job. Um, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, thank, uh, is Tweet here also? Yeah. Um, I got a sort of philosophical, intellectual uh, orientation to China uh, that I did not get last year uh, on the bus and in other places. And uh, it was sort of interesting to talk to Tui because uh, uh, Tui was in investment banking, um, is Malaysian, and uh, came to uh, Beijing, she may have told some of you, to study Mandarin, sort of reconnect with your own uh, ethnic uh, roots in a way. And um, I don't know that there's any better advocate uh, of the China experience than uh, Shui, so I'd really like to thank you uh, for that. Um, and of course, Wei Fong for putting a really a terrific uh, program together. Um, I do have, uh, uh, I have gifts for all of your uh, these the wonderful people, but only uh, one of them is here right now, so I'm going to present this, and that's okay because I got the extra small <laughs> jacket. We only, I, I got three smalls, which is how big are these new people that we haven't met, and uh, we'd like to present uh, you and uh, uh, with our gratitude. Um, it may not snow much in Suzhou, but uh, when it does get a little colder, uh, uh, please, uh, I think it's a bit, yeah? Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, and I will, uh, when I see 
few other folks. I'm going to uh, thank them as well personally. So thank you. I just, I just said all these wonderful things about you when you were out of the room. So, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Lee, don't come here. Um, we, we wanted to uh, express our uh, uh, gratitude. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. When you come to the states, you may need something warm. If they ever let you in. Uh, okay. so, uh, she told. I said, "How come you haven't been to the states?" She said, "Well, it's the visa for five minutes. I thought she was talking about the Chinese government." And then she said, "No, it's the American government that uh, hard to get a visa." And. Uh, <laughs> Also for uh, Lee Yang, thank you for setting these companies up. Very tough job, I know. Uh, so uh, we appreciate it, and uh, uh, good luck. And if you want to import Lee Yang to the States and you want to take Mandarin, she'll fly to the States and she can get a special class together. Yeah. Right? Uh, maybe something we should recommend to our IT. Yeah, uh, yeah that's an idea here. Um, and then uh, for uh, Pat, who did a terrific job and who uh, is going to give us uh, all this great uh, output. Uh, uh, she's sort of the new media. She's uh, Gen 2.0, 2.5 maybe. Um, oh my so uh, Pat, here's a thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting all of you. It's, great. it's been a, an experience too. And we look forward to meeting you again, either in China or Welcome to Malaysia. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Monty. That's our turn. Okay, we, uh, we, we wanted uh, to give you something so that you can take home and remember this experience and also maybe as a reminder of what's going on in our time. Uh, last year, we made uh, postcards uh, so that everybody could have a postcard and send your friends. Uh, because of the holiday, because of the national holiday, and also my artist is delivering a baby, <laughs> so we couldn't get the postcard out. Uh, but we were we were thinking of taking all these pictures and then make a poster, and then we will send send it to you, and then you know you could you could do something about it. And I thought uh, that might be a good moment. Uh, but we uh, we're going to give you each a mark, a ceramic mark. Now, as you know, uh, China was named from the ceramics, the porcelain. Right? Mm -hmm. And the world know China by the beautiful porcelain. Now, uh, th this is a very interesting company. Uh, it's called Spin. Uh, they, uh, they actually uh, bring renaissance to this very old art. Uh, not just bringing renaissance to it, but also uh, fit into the contemporary theme of elegant, simplicity, organic. Uh, there are three different designs because I went to the shop and they couldn't get me all same. So I, I hope you know you guys just pick them at random and and if you don't like that one and you change it with your friends, so you can use that for coffee or for uh, uh, for tea. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we will pass this out and uh, one by one. Uh, one by one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the the, the, the traffic name. flow could go. Right around and out okay, to. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. You want to pictures? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. This way. You, you want that? Okay. Wow. I don't know. Come here. Come this way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Shall we go right? Yeah. Okay. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. You want to check out? <laughs> Good job, thank you. Thank you. I need you. Thank 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 <laughs> Your diploma is going to be anticlimactic. Join <laughs> 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 He's in a hurry. He's in a hurry.
very much. Bali Mehman Khan, you're also in the